Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head. If you dream of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast will help you transform your life and business. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life that they desire. You deserve it, and it is possible. It's time for you to add value. This episode is brought to you by Perfect Publishing. Perfect Publishing is a different approach to publishing a book. Perfect Publishing is sharing a project of hope. We carefully chose heroes of hope who exemplify living a life they created through faith, hope, patience, and persistence. No matter what page you open to in this mini cube of hope, you will find a leader with a big heart. You see you are not alone. The authors may share similar challenges that only hope and action could resolve. Get your free ebook at getadoseofhope.com. Get a dose of hope.com. Our guests today are Andy and Antonia Hayes. Andy was born in Wichita, Kansas. He graduated from Loyola University, of Chicago. Andy brewed beer at various locations professionally after college before he went to law school. Hayes firm specializes in estate, trust administration, and litigation. From 2015 to 2018, Andy and his wife and four children moved down to Costa Rica and maintained their firm in Chicago. Andy commuted back to Chicago for a week each month to handle face-to-face -face meetings and court hearings. Antonio was born in Rochester, New York to Croatian immigrants. In addition to lawyering, Antonio is the firm's marketing director and head of talent acquisition at this time of growth for Hayes Firm, LLC. The firm currently has six employees and just hired a new law school grad who is studying for the bar. Andy and Antonia Hayes join Robert and Noel for a conversation about building a business and family together. The effort to design a life and build a business to sustain it, even when living in another country. We share stories of travel and family. Today, they are seeking to scale their business to another level, and that brings new challenges to their work and relationships. Andy and Antonia, thank you so much for joining us. We're just so excited to have this conversation together. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Robert. Good yeah, to be absolutely. here. Absolutely. So typically, I just let each guest share their entrepreneurial journey to start with and and tell us, you know, how you got into being an entrepreneur and and what you're doing now. Well, I'll start. Um, well, what, I'll start at the backwards. What we're doing now is <clears throat> we run um, a law firm, estate and trust administration and litigation and estate planning. So how did I become an entrepreneur? That's actually how I ended up in law school is I always wanted to own my own business. And I figured that that would be a good education for owning your own business. It is a good education for that. I didn't think that um, a law firm would be my business. So um, after law school, I worked at a firm for a couple of years. It was not a good fit. I started looking around at other law firms, similar type of jobs. And I realized it would have been a very similar situation to what I was in. And with the help of my lovely wife, who's sitting next to me, we made the, it turns out it was a smart decision. It probably didn't look like one at the time on paper when we had two very, very small children. After being out of law school for two years, I decided to open my own firm with, with no clients, you know, no anything and just a law degree which they really that's all you need and maybe some paper and a printer and some cute business cards that my friend designed yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. i still got one over here it was yeah, it was it. um it was yeah it was it was pretty momentous thing to get that business card <laughs> so that was almost 14 years ago now so now we have there are six of us total now so it's still pretty small but we're we're in a stage of growth. One of those additions was just added a, a young attorney. He's going to be an attorney. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. I mean, that's that's it as an overview of, of how we ended up here. So, yeah. Tony, if you have anything to say, I mean, our journey is very, it's, it's identical. Yeah, our um, journey is, is one. So I don't think yeah. she can add to the facts. The background <laughs> facts are the same. Yeah, the background facts are the same. Um, I was, I'm an attorney, obviously, and was working for um, a mid-sized firm at the beginning of my career. Um, 
when we decided that Andy was going to open up um, the law firm, I believe I was still working for, yeah, I was, I was still working yes. for a firm. And um, like Andy said, we had two, two little babies, not a client. Um, and I have, you know, not really sure how I agreed to that. Um, you know, it just was one of those moments where you just, you're like, yeah, let's, you know, let's go for it. Um, but I had all the faith and trust in his ability um, and knowing that as a team, we would be able to, you know, somehow manage it. And we did. And then our third child came along and that's when I left the firm that I was working for at the time and um, joined forces with Andy. And then shortly thereafter, we had our fourth child. I had my fourth, well, we had our fourth child. Um, and, you know, it's been nothing but family and business since then. Yeah, together. How has running a business impacted your relationship? Um, you know, I think what it's done is it has really given us um, an opportunity to be in constant communication and have to really compromise and navigate so many things at once. You just end up doing it unconsciously at some point after doing it for so long. It becomes part of just the way you you live. And I think maybe for most people that might be a touch overwhelming because he and I are in, you know, we talk all day long at home, at work. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of togetherness. And that's not for, that's not for everybody, but it works really well for us. And it is it's taken time to get to a place where yeah, where it's not, you know, where we we understand um, a bit better um, where the other is coming from, both in business and at home. And I mean, we don't really have anything to compare it to. So right. I, don't, I don't know how it's, affected, right. you know, we, it's not like we had some period where we did a normal thing where we each kind of went right. to our offices. I suppose we did, but it For was a very, very short time, very short, short period yeah. of time. Right? Totally understand. So, so what helped you in determining roles and in responsibilities in, in the business? Well, for most, for a lot of that time, Antonia was with the kids. So she wasn't working full time. Um, and so then it was, it was pretty obvious. Um, I was doing most everything for the business. Right. But now that's changed. And we've kind of divided the roles rather than we overlap on all every file, which would be a little too much togetherness, you know, as you know, that is possible. Um, so Antonia is focusing on marketing. Um, when we just hired this, this uh, young gentleman, she, she did all of that. So those kind of issues, you know, helping us get our software in order, kind of those run in the office, big picture kind of, things mm -hmm. is what she's she's focused on so the stuff that everybody should be doing in their business right but um it's hard to to find the time to do that when we're growing the business and we still need to to be lawyers you know so right. a law firm is i mean you certainly can scale a law firm but it's you still have to be grinding out and doing that work you know because that's what they're hiring you for it's it's not like you can automate certain things. And so, so we still have to do the legal work as well. And the entrepreneurial side is, you know, potentially, I mean, I find it very enjoyable, but Antonia is kind of dedicated most of her time to that, to that, um, developing relationship, all, all of that other, the other stuff that is kind of outside the, the day to day law practice. But I'm still lawyering as well. Yes. Yeah. You got to keep the, your joy in what you're doing. Right. Um, what was the biggest challenge of working together and how did you push through? Antonio? The biggest challenge? Yeah. That seems like a question you would. Why? You're more self-aware. You, <laughs> you have better answers for things like that. Um, it wasn't a setup, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, It's hard to sort of pinpoint like to pinpoint it that way, you know, that takes a concrete understanding of what we're doing. <laughs> so what was the, what was the question again? Just the, the, the biggest, biggest challenge, challenge to the business in general. 
to us working. Well, just together. working together. I mean, it could okay. it could be how it impacted your marriage. Um, it could be you know, what, what whatever was challenging and, and how did you push through that together? I mean, I personally think maybe in the beginning for me, um, it might have been you know coming into the firm that was somewhat you know that was established and being um, you know the primary caregiver, so to speak, at home. And then, albeit it was our firm, I still was not, I was not in Andy's position where I was, you know, um, leading things. I was having to take probably, you know, take advice or cases from my husband. Take direction. Take direction. And that personally is very hard for me to do. Um, and so taking direction from Andy was very challenging, I think. And I think I don't think it ever happened. That's why we had yeah, that's we, yeah, that, right. It never really ultimately worked out that way. Um, I think we tried it that we tried that and um, it good. didn't work. It's so we've we've been very nimble um, with how things have sort of um, you know uh, morphed. And that was, I think that was, I, we realized it could not be a tradition. Or it couldn't be me coming in and then him telling me what to do. That wasn't going to um, work for us. See now, I mean, early on, I agree with everything Antonio said, but early on it was, you know, a smaller firm. There's right. not as many clients. There's not as many of anything, right. you know? So it was like, well, there's really nothing like the things that Antonio is doing now that wasn't necessary or anything so um as the firm grew it's much easier now to carve it out to where we That's don't right. overlap on and i don't need to give you know instructions on certain deadlines and things like that you know which yeah. is does not go over well yeah the growth has really helped i mean the growth has given us the flexibility and the space to be able to carve out roles that work for us roles that nice. didn't didn't exist before so right right so i know i know one of the things you guys have also done is um traveled and and so can we talk about designing the business around a lifestyle that you want and making those intentional choices i mean i i'm yes we did do that i mean you're referring to um when we went to costa rica so we, we went to costa rica from 2015 through 2018 pre everybody on zoom mm -hmm. um and yeah we were down there for three years and i was running the practice from down there and i would come back here one week a month here to chicago one week a month to meet clients go to court appearances you kind of get we would schedule everything for that all the necessary face-to-face -face things um during that month. So it was very rudimentary when we did, went down there, you know? So, I mean, as far as what we had going on internally and certainly externally, it was very rudimentary too. I mean, it was just phone. And I mean, I didn't even do a single zoom call during that entire time to a client, certainly not to a court, to no one. Um, and that forced us to get, as many things you know on the server using the cloud for things whereas before that we really weren't you know attorneys are are notoriously kind of behind the times i think a lot of that has changed even yeah. since 2015. sure There's so much so much available uh to attorneys that wasn't available before cloud-based everything right so we're keeping going on that uh, we're trying to get everything running as smoothly as possible on the tech side. But now what I'm focused on is setting up the business in a way that I don't need to check every thing that happens in the business. Whereas even during the Costa Rica time, we were still very small and I, well, I was in that position. It really, it was, the business wasn't any different than if I was here in Chicago every day, it was, just maybe some an extra layer of a little more sophisticated technology and that was about it but now i'm trying to set it up to where i'm 
I'm not involved in, in everyday decision making. And that, that comes through not I shouldn't say decision making, but every day, you know, I don't need to touch everything that comes in and out of this office. Uh, I'm trying to get there through systems in place to where we we attack every problem and every situation kind of with the same system, the same approach. And then, you know, hiring. That's that's the one thing that you got to get the right people. And we've hired since the Costa Rica, we have two new people. So that's a pretty big increase just by, you know, percentage wise based on the, the small size of our firm. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking to, to get more people. But if I don't want to just add people and then just kind of feed them jobs, you know, I need to get a system in place where the person understands what their job description is and they fill that role rather than just help me out on this. Oh no, help me out on this next. Help me out on the, I don't, that's not how, um, that's not how you can achieve any kind of ability to, to travel or any of those things. You just be, you might as well be at your desk all day long. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by the newly released book, Dream Life Planner, Move from Tired and Overwhelmed to Free and Empowered by Noel L. Peterson, available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at empower, E-M-P-O-W-E-R, to dream.com. That's empower, number two, dream.com. If you enjoy the show, please like and subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. Let's let's. I, want, I just want to dig into the decision to move to Costa Rica and recognizing that you could do the business there, and then of course now I think you wanted to scale and and build the bigger practice, which required you to be back back in the states. Right. Uh, Correct. But but able to design it differently, right? Which is why now you're you're hiring and scaling in a different way and being very intentional about how you build the practice. So let's, right. I just want to dig into that a, a little bit more just for, for people that, I mean, most entrepreneurs want to travel. Most entrepreneurs want the freedom to, you know, work, work any place. And then of course they want the freedom to not have to be involved in, in every decision that they make. And so those are all really important elements. I just want to dig in a little deeper on setting that those processes up and systems up for, for built around the life that you want. Right. I mean, I, so I, I think the systems we're trying to set up are a lot of the work that we do is it's not that I, I won't say they're identical cases, but I mean, the same types of cases come in. So, I mean, if we have a template on how to handle things and the timeline on when things need to happen, that timeline doesn't just live in my head or live in another attorney's head. I mean, we need to have that out for everyone to see so that anyone can kind of jump in and help when, when they need to help. And it, it's been, a, it's been essential in thinking about how I'm going to train a new hire, a new attorney who is just graduated from law school and they're learning everything for the first time, I mean, not how to write or how to do legal research, but everything on how to, handle a case and talk mm -hmm. to clients. I'm trying to to get all of that in order so that that individual will know, you know, what's expected of them and what they need to do. And I don't need to to look on, look over their shoulder. That's kind of a, a vague, I, I don't want to get too deep into, you know, what kind of stuff we have in place because everybody will, it'll be too, too minute Nuanced, and boring, yeah. you know. I also think um, just in terms of, you know, the systems in place or really we're focused on a type of culture, a culture um, in our firm that allows people freedom. Um, you know, we have a, we had a hybrid situation for people before hybrid was a thing. Um, you know, people were working, coming to the office, what, three days a week, most people. Um, if, you know, so, and, and we're open to, um, you know, we're open to that and we're open to people working from home and working in different places and different spaces and um, because that's what we want to do. So um, the culture is, you know, is set up such that 
people can move around. <laughs> and um, that's important to us because clearly we, you know, the Costa Rica thing was a decision, was a lifestyle decision. Um, and it worked out. Um, <laughs> and now, you know, there's definitely plans in the future to be able to, you know, keep the business going, as Andy was indicating, with different types of systems and things, but also with the right people. Um, I think that's really important. We're a small firm, we're an intimate firm. Um, it's important that everybody sort of has the same, you know, that people people are coming from from things with the same perspective. So what has helped you, do you think has helped you guys shift from being that entrepreneur couple to an employer? Mm. Um, you know, I don't know that I see it like as a shift so much. I don't see it so separate. Like if we're an entrepreneur couple and then now, you know, an employer, I think, I think it's one you know, one thing, I don't know. I, do you see it as a, did you, do you see it as a shift or? I mean, I don't, I think you, you can look at it two ways. You can say, and I know plenty of folks that say that, that if you are an entrepreneur and you think, well, I have all this freedom that I can go work wherever. And they see an employee would kind of tie them down and, and may prevent them from doing that. You know, they say, well, I don't want to, all the obligation and the responsibility mm -hmm. of having an employee. I want to still just be able to do what I want to do wherever, whenever I want to do it. Um, I know a lot of folks that are kind of think that way of uh, really small, you know, small attorneys I'm speaking of uh, solo, or maybe they have one person, but I guess I see it. And maybe I used to think of it that way too, because it, it was just, it was just me for a long time. And then it was, you know, it's been very slow growth. So, I mean, I see having employees as giving more freedom because that allows yes. me to focus more on the entrepreneurial side yes. of things because I can hire someone to do the legal work and we can work together on it, but they can do a lot of the heavy lifting on the legal work. And then I can focus more on the entrepreneurial yes. activities. So maybe initially you kind of, some people think, I don't want to have to deal with all those employees and all this, but if you really want to go beyond where you're at, just kind of as a practitioner practicing, working your cases on your own time, granted, but uh, you need to, you need to take on employees. And yeah. I mean, if you have a good working environment, it's, it's good for everyone. I mean, the employees have a good working environment. Um, your working environment is better. So I, mean, I think that's kind of part of the whole thing. I don't know if it was a shift, but I think it just kind of was a growth, logical growth to me um, when you think about being an entrepreneur. Well, it, and it's a choice, right? I mean, your your intention to design it, obviously, as a as a lawyer hiring other lawyers and adding on lawyers, you can double, triple your caseload, right? Or you can, you know, or you can hire three lawyers and double your caseload, and then everybody actually works a little bit less but i mean right. so that's a choice what right what is the revenue that we want to meet the goals that we have you know do we want to be able to take a month off do we want to be able to 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 travel you know throughout the year and that's the piece that i think entrepreneurs lose sight of right the the business takes over right and the, they their life ends up being run by the business rather than designing the lifestyle that they want and and allowing them to design intentionally design the business to fit the lifestyle Right. I'm trying to be very intentional about the whole thing. Um, I mean, we, we were pr pretty slow to hire someone, but I'm not too slow, you know, right. because I mean, I, I would never want to work, you know, insane hours. It just, it's not, it's not what I want to do. You know, that's not yeah. how I, how I see this. Yeah. What do you guys like to do in your free time? Sale. Ooh, nice. She's answering for me. I don't think she likes sailing that I much. Do, so. I do. I do. You know, I just need a motor. She I need just a needs motor. perfect conditions. I need a motor in perfect conditions. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm thinking about our family activities. Oh, um, yeah. 
a skiing there's a we are everybody skis so we spent we spent four months in colorado southwest mm -hmm. Colorado, last chris last last year year before last during covid so during 21 so 2021 nice yeah so um we were in pagosa springs for some time everybody was e-learning and we were running the business from from that house that we stayed in but so everybody's a big avid skier snowboarder um I like Nordic skiing myself. Um, I would like to spend a lot of time in nature. I like to be outside as much as possible um, you gotta in get, any way, shape, or form. You got to get creative around here to do that, but there's a lot of spots to go to. You know, we spend a lot of time at Lake Michigan, Yeah, as Antonia said. Yeah. Um, nice. Costa Rica is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Costa Rica is beautiful. Co compared to Chicago. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Entirely different world on, different on many world. levels. Yeah. Not just so, <laughs> so, so what has been the blessings of, of raising your family while building your business? Or maybe the other way around, building your business while raising your family. <laughs> the blessings. Um, and I feel like you, you, you spend quite a bit of time talking to the kids about, um, you know, working for yourself and um, sort of the no, those notions, what that, what that means. Um, I think they, you know, they, the kids get to see us work to, I think it's, I it must be in it. It must be, you know, and I don't know that we get spend a lot of time really delving into it with the kids about, but I, I would be interesting to have someone to interview them about their perspective of what it's like to have a mom and dad who parent and work together. And, you know, I, I suspect that would be, interesting um but there's so many blessings I, I mean i wouldn't even know i feel like the whole thing is a blessing um feels like a gift um to be able to do this you know um and thank god everybody's healthy um and we could just keep going <laughs> one foot in front of the other um but yeah i don't know i don't know if that answered the question but i mean pagosa springs is definitely a beautiful area in colorado so I'll compliment you on that if uh, yeah if we wow. moved, it would be Pagosa Springs or Durango or Telluride. Like that's our oh favorite little God. corner of Colorado. I had no idea. I had never been to Southwest Colorado and I fell in love, fell in love with so much, fell in love with all of it really. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an amazing little area of Colorado that just is, <laughs> is incredible. From yeah. like five hours from there, you can go to, I mean, anywhere in the four corners, yeah, I mean, what, four, where wow. you can go with like a, day's drive is 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 nuts i mean it's beautiful. right yeah. yeah it's it's six hours for us and and we've done weekend yeah. trips and and yeah. uh it, there's a we love the durango silverton train which is yeah. oh, we did that. Train and yeah. it's it's just yeah our grandson we took him in the middle of november it's made stunning. the drive just to go for literally the christmas train polar express oh, is polar a 40 express. Did yeah. You know that one? Oh, yeah. I, was, I saw that and I was like, oh gosh, that would be so amazing. It's only 45 minutes. So we drove six hours, stayed in a hotel, did a 45 minute train ride, and then drove all the way back. It was like crazy. But, but <laughs> there, there's side. also one down there in Chama in New Mexico, just over the border, a similarly old, old train, which I guess is maybe even more kind of purist, whatever some guy was telling me. But it's, nice. I don't think it's quite as scenic. The, the, yeah ride itself but if somebody's super into trains that's a cool one too yeah it's pretty hard to beat the that route up to silverton <laughs> for the views yeah. 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 yeah 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 incredible all right now we're distracted from business <laughs> <laughs> what was your most memorable date <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> when we went away last month oh yeah maybe that <laughs> That's actually true. Our, we just celebrated 20 years. Yay. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. And um, we went away. I mean, I think you're right that I, we went away um, for the first time for seven days um, without the kids and went to Mexico and did not adventure in any way, which is what we always do, whether right. it be with the kids or alone, like how we ended up in Costa Rica. We took like a spurlunking trip and canyoning trip to see if you know, and then we decided, oh, this is a cool place. Maybe we'll live here one day. I mean, it wasn't like that. This this trip was memorable only insofar as we rested, <laughs> like really rested. And it was something that, you know, we had not done in 
20 years. So awesome. So obviously you're, you're very intentional in the growth of your business uh, on the personal growth side, um, developing your character, um, value gratitude and those, those things. How important has that been for each of you in, in your entrepreneurial journey? Well, I'm really, I mean, I believe that we live in community. We don't live as individuals. Obviously, I think that's indicative based on, you know, our family and our business and what we do. Um, but also, I believe that, you know, if you're not giving back um, something somewhere, um, you know, I can't do that. I can't, I can't live that way. So, I mean, we, you know, we spend time um, with, I spend time with our church Um and community giving in that sense and working with, you know, um, a parish here in Chicago on the West side. And, um, you know, it's important for me to instill those values in our children. And so I think that that sort of, you know, relates to, to growth in so far as the community is concerned. I think having gratitude for what you have is, is it necessary, especially, when you're in such a stressful kind of situation day to day, as we find ourselves in with the yeah. work. Um, yeah, I don't know. The gratitude is, is what, you know, focusing on those positive things in our life, whatever they are. I try to do that with my kids each day. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes a long way in mental health, you know, because if you, anybody can focus on, the negative things that are dragging them down, but we're trying to, to stay positive and you need to be positive. If you're going to, if you're crazy enough to be an entrepreneur, I mean, you got to wake up every morning, you know, mm -hmm. thinking it's, it's going to be better than the other, the last day or else you're not, you're not going to make it. You know. So what tools were effective in building your audience? Were, tools were effective in building our audience. Yeah, finding clients or lead generation. Um, obviously, you, you started with nothing, but that was a while back. So yeah. um, what's helping now, I guess, in, we've, in client acquisition? Right. We've um, put a lot of efforts into having a decent website, putting out content that way. Mm -hmm. That's been very, very good Lucrative, for us. Yeah. And I kind of focused on that from the beginning. You know, It used to be a lot easier to get on the top of Google. <laughs> you know, 14 years ago than it is now, but still, I mean, there you could kind of game it or whatever. I don't know. But um, now, you know, we're just trying to push out content and then all the traditional sources of face-to-face -face networking and referrals. I mean, we get a lot of business from other attorneys. attorneys. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. What's your big dream? Big dream. <laughs> walk in the quiet of the mountains. I mean, um, what's my big dream? Yeah. I mean, I really want to spend a lot of time in nature. So my big dream is to get to a place where, where we can do that. Um, and you know, my dreams are very, um, I don't have an overarching dream. My dream is, um, to be at peace day in and day out because you don't really you're not really in control of anything so that, um, that's a pretty important dream yeah that's that's that it really is ultimately i think my dream is to be at peace what about you andy that's a good dream that's my dream too <laughs> I'm, I'm farther away I, I'm, I'm pretty far away from my dream of, of, of inner peace but uh yeah i mean as far as i would like to have this business going to a point yes. where we could, you know, run it from anywhere. I don't really just want to flip the switch and, you know, be retired and all that. That's not what I'm looking forward to. Like as most entrepreneurs are, are not, you know, um, I'm looking forward to a time when I can be here sometimes and then, you know, be Southern Colorado, you know, Costa Rica, maybe kind of run that three, three spot circle yeah. for a few months at a time. I mean, that would be the ideal kind of situation, you know, nice. now inner peace, of course, if, if I <laughs> well, don't, we're talking about big if dreams. I don't I have mean, peace, happen. this is Costa Rica. So if I don't have, <laughs> if I don't have peace, then that doesn't, 
that's not going to help me. You know, it doesn't matter what environment I'm in if I don't have peace. So, of yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Costa Rica and Colorado are challenging for some. There's people that are afraid they can't leave and take even a day or two away from their business. So, yeah. So the message is important for, to share that you can do other things and, and you can travel and you you can run your business if you choose to, and you can travel in times and, and not run your business. And so both That's of right. those are options, but That's you have right. to be intentional yeah. and, and plan for it. All right. So last thing I always ask, um, you've just spent the last half hour with a young entrepreneur or maybe a young attorney and you want to leave them with Andy and Antonia's words of wisdom. What would you share? I would, I mean, I would say to a young entrepreneur, do not be afraid, afraid. to yeah, hire someone. Same thing. <laughs> nice. Don't be afraid to hire someone because it's very scary. But if you really have your, have it together, it's going to, it will pay for itself many times over that, that one hire. Or just do it. not be afraid. I would have ended it. Do not be afraid. There you go. Well, we, we just appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, definitely. Just, Thank you for enjoy, having us. And yeah, enjoyed your words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, or leave a review. We have a free gift for you at addvaluemindset.com. That's addvaluemindset.com. We've collected some of the best mindset secrets shared by successful entrepreneurs on our podcast, and we want to give them to you for free addvaluemindset.com. In our next episode, Natalie Doremu and Robert discuss creating a business by solving problems. Now they take their expertise and built the life that they want because of the freedom of entrepreneurship. Her and her husband empower others to grow their own businesses and make an impact on the world through online e-courses and now software to support content creators.